What's up, Zika Projects? And today we are doing another episode of Meet My Right. And today we are with this Director Glanzers, that one, and then there's this one. So we're going to talk to the owner and see what he has done to the car. Behind the boot, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Glanza, you can introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, um, my name is Uilanji. Um, I'm the owner of uh, this EP91 Glanza. Um, I've loved them like from day one, from the first time I just like set my eyes on on this car's uh, been a fan of them. and I've always told myself I would build one. Not buy one, I would build one. I actually had faith that I would build one. And uh, yeah, so it was a rough journey. It wasn't easy actually. Uh, knocked the engine about four times before I could actually get to where we are today. Um, my love for these cars just came in when I realized the potential that, the hidden potential that they have. Most people underrate these cars because of First of all, the size, mm -hmm. and look at the engine, yeah. and then, yeah, make a fuss out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I just have the, the courage and uh, I just have to make that I can actually make something better out of uh, this, mm -hmm. this small thing. How long did it take you to actually get to this point? Uh, I think I built this engine, like, it took me two years. Yeah. First year, um, I built the engine. It took me like about three months, three, four months, mm -hmm. just building the engine because I had to wait for certain parts to come in. And then it was in an accident, so I had to source some other parts. Okay. So um, it took me about four, three, four months to build it. Mm -hmm. And then it took longer to fire it up because some pieces were not, uh, were not there. But after I managed to fire it up, it only ran for like a week. I only drove it for a week. I didn't even go far. Then the engine just suddenly stopped uh, maintaining oil pressures. And then eventually just locked, it just, uh, just knocked. So I had to build it again for a second time. The second build didn't even move anywhere. I just built it. And before I could even drive off anywhere, the engine knocked again. And uh, third, third, third build, I wasn't even confident in it because it was just it was a try and error thing. Mm -hmm. um, I had bought about 10 to, 10 to 11 pumps, oil pumps that is. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was, I was suspecting maybe it would be the oil pump mm -hmm. or maybe the oil regulation uh, pressure valve. But then afterwards, uh, I, when I broke the engine for the third build, I, I discovered that um, the old engine block was scrapped. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I had to change the engine block. I used the same cylinder head, um, same systems, uh, same shaft. I think the only thing that was badly damaged was the block. Yeah, so it reached the point where it couldn't even uh, maintain oil pressure to the point of where it could raise and and this uh, sustain the shafts and the rings and blah, blah. So it would knock immediately, like instant. Mm -hmm. You just crank it, just runs for a few seconds and then it starts knocks because the, in the, the block would be dry. Mm -hmm. yeah. So after I changed that, um, I wasn't even confident for the fourth day then as well because I just thought I've been doing this over and over again and I don't even think it's going to work out. But anyway, let me just try it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when I slammed in the port engine door, yeah. uh, I wasn't confident enough, but uh, I still went ahead, tried it, 
and it ran properly. I didn't drive it. I just started the engine. I mean, I just started the car. Mm. Let it run for some like good one week because I was just observing how it would maintain the oil pressure mm. if it would cut or if it would sustain itself. Mm. Surprisingly, it actually worked out perfectly. And all the modifications I've made with the valve and the, the oil pump were successful. Okay. Yeah. So we, that's I think that's the point where I got to start now. Like. We're adjusting everything else, putting back things in place, just to see how far it can go. And I think that was, uh, that's about the same time I got to the road that's for the vehicle when I was done with it. So I can say I was, I just got done building this engine like this. Yeah, this year, that was in, uh, not this year, maybe July. Yeah. July 2020. Must be a nice feeling, huh? After, After it, yes. It's a relief. Trust me, it's a relief. Um, I really thought I would, like, I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't manage to do it. I thought I was just losing my mind now. Like, I think I just have to get rid of this okay. dream of making something like this work. Because, I mean, let's face it, most people say a port is not a good thing. And I can't, it's difficult to maintain and all that stuff. But with my experience, after, all these knocks I have had with this engine, I'm proud to say, I don't think it's a difficult engine. It just takes how determined that person is with that engine. Yeah. So, what do, you, what do you have to say to us who buy projects and have them for one week and sell them? And sell them. Ah, <laughs> you guys, she's <it's> not dreaming. <laughs> she's not dreaming. <laughs> you know, like I've had, a bunch, I've had a bunch of cars in the space. Of, and then I just keep on buying. Selling, like, you know, like just touch a few things. No, immediately when the project when the project starts, it's it's over to me. Like I'm done. Like the fun is over. And you're done. Yes. Like the fun is over. So I just, I just want to let it go. Uh, maybe it's because you just don't have most of the things to your disposal. Yeah, maybe. That's why you don't have the drive to to get to finish it up. Mm. Yeah. So I think I'll advise you pick a car that would suit what you have at your disposal. Mm. And then take your time with it. It takes time because the project, there's no project that takes two days unless you're like a millionaire. Mm. Then you have everything at your disposal, but you just wake up in the morning, go online, order whatever it is that you need. Mm. Yeah. But if you're a person who's like, I mean, like the way we are as youth in Lusaka or in Zambia right now, I would consider just take your time. If you're going to get a project car, you should be ready to sacrifice at least a good two, three years of not driving that vehicle. Yeah, if you want it to come out good and perfect, it depends those years. Because if you want a quick one, you can get a quick project car. But it's one that you'll be driving after one day or two days, you pack it because there's an oil leak or the, yeah. the engine is making funny sounds. No, you need to change the gearbox and all that stuff. Yeah. But if you take your time, you'll be, you'll be assured that whatever it is that you'll be putting on that vehicle is at least fully functional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you have that point where you buy a spare part, and then there's a try and error stage. Yeah. yeah. You drive it, trying to test if those parts are actually genuine. Mm -hmm. And then eventually in the process of changing, you get to find the exact good parts. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like, that's where the whole project thing goes down now. Because you can't just have a specific part and then you order there and then it's already working perfectly. Mm -hmm. And you put the shackles there, but then if there's no money, take your time. Mm -hmm. No project car takes two, three days to get done. Not even a year. Um, yeah, I've seen people who have done like the best builds in the world. Mm. And you hear the story of how long it took for them to get done with that vehicle here. It took him six years. It took him 10 years. I've heard like people talk about mm. projects like that. And you look at the car, some of us will actually say, I oh, know it's not even much that she put in. He put in basic stuff. But the time that he put in makes that basic stuff different. Way so guys, than... listen, more of the story. Yeah. If you want to build a car fast, money is important. <laughs> money. Money is the key. Yeah. If you don't have the money, don't even expect it to be done in a week. Just wait for those three years of yours to be... <laughs> so those 100 projects that you have, you work some, you have 100 projects, keep it, bro. So <laughs> be of use one day. You'll buy one coil. I don't know how much, how much, how much a coil is for. Because, because, uh, it depends. Depends. Yeah, it depends, but you can get some for 350, yeah. some for 500. So yeah. Then you have to get maybe four, 
And if you have to get uh so if you got a V6, guys. <laughs> 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 so I'm a man. I choose one. You beat the project car or have a girlfriend? Because oh, project... the house. <laughs> yeah, build the house. Because <laughs> projects and women don't go together. They can't. Mm. They can't. That's it. Mm. All right, guys. So we're gonna take a drive, and then from there we'll, yeah, you know, uh, say our what you call closing remarks, and yeah, good stuff. Let's go. Inspired the build? Well, I've been checking out uh, some builds from like Sri Lanka, especially Sri Lanka. The guys in Sri Lanka are like, I think that the guys that have got the best glanzers so far. The UK guys, well, they do have good glanzers, but they're only good well, when it comes to the <laughs> speed and all that stuff. Besides that, the guys in Sri Lanka have got three quarters of everything when it comes to glanzers. Speed. I think I've actually seen the best and fastest cleansers built from Sri Lanka. Some that go for like 800 HP. A big boost. Big boost. That's like strictly for drag. Nothing like nice dashboard or whatsoever. It's just throughout row cage. Big ass boost. And uh, got uh, this launch controller and everything else proper. Yeah. And then. From the time I owned my first Starlet, I always told myself I'll build a Glanzer. Like I just said, I love this car so much, I'll just build one. It's going to be unique, special in its own way. Yeah. And um, at least I'm getting somewhere with this one. We had trouble with uh, restoring it though. Now, times I try to build the engine and it knocked. Think about it. Four times. This, this engine was... What, 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 what was causing the knock? Um, the person I bought the car from uh, didn't explain well what happened to the engine block. So I only came to discover that it had cracked after an impact it had. The guy fell in the drainage and then hit, uh, I don't know what, whether it was a hole or something like that. So the impact was so bad, cracked the manifold until the engine block then you couldn't maintain oil pressures oh, okay. yeah. so uh, each time I would build it it would just run maybe like for tops a week and then oil pressure light would go on and I would force it because I was just thinking maybe it's just a wiring issue mm -hmm. force it before you know it no the second build didn't even move just fired up the car knocked again third build I was even telling myself ah, this build doesn't break out I'm sorry car. I tried it it, uh, it didn't work out perfectly but then I got to them and said to do things uh, about like the same things I was overlooking concerning this uh, this um, so mostly when you rebuild especially the turbo ones the air pressure valve I mean the oil pressure valve has to be adjusted. The spring has to be put. You have to set up with some new washers there so that you can stretch out. And also I was advised not to skim the, the area where the oil pump sits. Because if you skim it meaning you have to start skimming each and every pump you find. You level up to the same position that you skim the engine pump. So I ended up getting another block because I dashed like a number of blocks in this door. So I just decided to pick up another block and try it again. Did the same procedures and ever since I've never had a problem. So it's perfect. So like how much how much do you discuss how much you spent? Roughly because of all those deals I had to make. about 10 oil pumps 
because I thought it was oil pump that was giving me a problem. Mm -hmm. So I, I ended up buying like 10 oil pumps. I would buy one, this one fills, buy another one, fills, buy another one. Just someone just told me, you're wasting your money. Uh, change your block, touch here and there, then yeah, that's how it goes. Oh, right now. So you don't know need to let go of uh, one of those pallets at home, huh? <laughs> um. If you guys have project cars and you know other cars that you would want us to come and review, you can get in touch with us. Uh, ZK Projects on Facebook, ZK Projects on Instagram, ZK Projects everywhere, bro. Like just hit us up, man. We'll pull up, we'll come through, and we'll do the thing. So guys, make sure to subscribe, uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and everywhere. And make sure make sure you buy some merch from us, guys. ZCP to the world. Good chalo. All right, guys. Cheers. See you soon. Every project can need this kind of system. Bro. <laughs> Shouldn't be perfect. Ah, this project can is perfect. Yeah.